were a lot of them. And most of these thrills took place right here in historic Yankee Stadium. The biggest of them all came in that World Series of 1960. In the bottom of the fourth inning, the bases are again jammed as Bobby Richardson lines the ball into left field for a single. I think of the many experiences that I had and have had on the field. Bobby Richardson pulls a long drive to left field. And with these experiences, I think of the opportunities. After Blanchard doubles in the Yankees' seven, Richardson fights out another triple. The opportunities on the field and the opportunities off the field because of baseball. How lucky it has been for me to have been a Yankee. To God be the glory. Legacy is a big word, and I honestly think that the big thing about my association with the Yankees, I can see so many things that happen. I can see now where there's a chapel going, where devotions are coming out. I can see where even the owners of the ball club uh, came to know Christ in a wonderful way. The commissioner of baseball uh, put it where we could all have devotions together. Sumter has been my home now for a long time. I was born right here. The elementary schools are right there. The YMCA is there. And my my church was Grace Baptist Church, and so I was in an area that uh, I could go to school, I could go to church, and I could go to the Y, who sponsored all of the sports in town. When I joined the Yankees, they were a team that won. I, I kind of took a stand as far as the Lord is concerned, and they made a little bit of fun of it. Uh, the Lord just worked it out. We were a team, we played together well, but they respected the fact that I love the Lord. And so the Lord has just put me together with a group of men that I still today have had wonderful opportunities to be with. And so many of them have come to know the Lord in a wonderful way. And I'm excited. And if I had to pick one thing out as an outstanding thing in my life, it would be the fact that there was a Christian sports writer that used to when we'd come into Detroit, he'd say, hey, Rich, I know a church where there has an early service. If any of your players want to go, and we'd do that. And I'd ask Mantle, and sometimes Mantle would go, sometimes he wouldn't. He'd say, "If I'm, a, uh, I'll be dressed and ready to go. If you don't see me, go ahead without me. I remember that Red Barber, our announcer, who was a wonderful Christian, said, why don't we just have a, a Bible study right in the locker room? And we did that, and then that Christian sports writer and I went together and met with the commissioner of baseball, and he gave us $20,000 to start baseball chapel. And now every team in the major leagues has a baseball chapel. It has worked so good and so much uh, good for our ball club and for the game of baseball. I've been asked a question a number of times, why would you retire from the Yankees at a time when they were winning? You could have played another five years, six years. And the travel in baseball is 162 games a year, 81 of those on the road. And so it's a time of celebration. And now that I'm out of baseball and now that I'm home, I can see where it was a wonderful decision. Your name may not appear down here in this world's Hall of Fame. In fact, you may be so unknown that no one knows your name. The honors, the story, the glory may come your way in neon lights of blue. But if you know and love the Lord, then I have news for you. This Hall of Fame is only good as long as time shall be. But keep in mind, God's Hall of Fame is for eternity. This crowd on earth, they soon forget the heroes of the past. They cheer like mad until you fall, and that's how long you last. But in God's Hall of Fame, by just believing in His Son inscribed, you'll find your name. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name, however small, that's written there beyond the stars in that celestial hall, for every famous name on earth or glory that they share. I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name up there. South Carolina Baptist, the legend, Bobby Richardson. <laughs> you know, as we were thinking about uh, impact and we were thinking about South Carolina Baptist legends, uh, you never really know who just a small town, young man, maybe in your student ministry, um, may impact the world. And um, Mr. Richardson, you were in one of our South Carolina Baptist churches a long time ago. You heard the gospel. You came to know Christ. And uh, you were just in a small town in South Carolina. And, um, and then you went to the big city. So how was it different moving from Sumter, South Carolina to New York City? Well, we had 8,000 in my hometown. And 
we'd have 72,000 at a game, just one game in New York. <laughs> Quite different. I lived in Ridgewood, New Jersey, had relatives up there, and they found us a nice home. So it was a smaller town, and we commuted into to, to New York. I really enjoyed my time in New York. Those were wonderful days. It was a great ball club. They won nine out of the first 10 years I played as a Yankee. And, uh, and so we were kind of spoiled. We won in 55, 6, 7, 8, but 59 we didn't yet win. And we kind of wondered what happened, but then again we came back 61, 2, 3, 4. So, and then I retired a little bit early, came back to spend a little more time with my family, but looking back, just a wonderful time in baseball. Wow. So you, you played with some legends, uh, Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle, um, all of the greats, but you were great in your own right. I mean, MVP, World Series champ. And uh, so what was it like, though? You were, a, you were a youngster. You meet Mickey Mantle for the first time. So what was that interaction like? Well, I remember it because I was 17 years old. I signed the day after I graduated from high school. And when I got to New York, I was to work out with the team for three days. And I remember I was to field some ground balls, then go up to the cage and take some swings. And I fielded the ground balls. When I got to the cage, I wasn't about to step in front of Yogi Berra or Hank Bauer. And Mickey Mantle came up from behind, put his arm around me and said, come on, kid, step in here and take some swings. And it sort of started a friendship that lasted a lifetime. Not only a dozen years in New York as a teammate, but after baseball, we even got closer. I couldn't tell you how many times he came down to my home. We had a, a, a big banquet in my hometown, raised enough money to build a YMCA. Mickey spoke at that and gave a batting exhibition. When I coached at the University of South Carolina, he came down and, and gave a clinic to eight-year-old boys. We caught up with one of those boys 40 years later. He said, what was it like having the icon of baseball giving you instruction? He said, well, I remember one thing. We asked Mr. Mantle if you take one swing. And batting right-handed, he hit the ball out of the park, over the football field, into the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I supposedly jumped up and said, stop, we can't do that. My car is parked over there. <laughs> Great thrills. Mickey was a wonderful guy. And later in life, of course, because of his lifestyle, he needed a new kidney. He actually needed a new liver. And Baylor Medical, Medical Center is where he was. And I can remember the day he was on national television with Bob Costas. He'd just been through Betty Ford, and he was... Uh, excited because he wasn't drinking anymore. And at the same time, he said, I, but I still have a void in my heart. He said, I haven't been a good father, haven't been a good husband. It took so much for him at that time, looking like he did, to stand in front of a national audience and say those things. And I remember so well that uh, a little bit after that, I received a call at the hotel we were staying at the All-Star Game in Dallas, Texas. And it was Mickey, and he said, I want you to pray for me. I'm waiting for a, a liver transplant. And I remember that we prayed together. And the verse that I shared at that time with Mickey was Philippians, but I use the Philip translation. It says, delight yourself in the Lord. Find your joy in him at all times. Never forget his nearness. Then it says, tell God in detail your problems, your anxieties. And the promise is the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds as we, as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Betsy went out and spent the next two days with Mickey's wife, and I remember going back to say goodbye, and he said, don't forget now, you to have my funeral. And I did have his funeral. It was on national television, and I think the Lord was really honored. And I heard those words that some party had written before, and it said it all. This crowd on earth, they soon forget the heroes of the past. Cheer like mad until you fall, that's all of your last. But in God's Hall of Fame, by just believing in his son, inscribed you'll find your name. Wonderful words. Wow. Great teammate. Wow. Well, you, you retired at the top of your game. You're like Michael Jordan. <laughs> and uh, I'm just curious, why did you do that? Well, it's really funny, but I ruined my whole career with Tony Kubek in the minors and the major leagues. 
we both were families, had families growing up, and I sort of felt like I had grown up without uh, seeing my young boys play baseball and the girls basketball. And Tony and I just decided that we both go retired, 29 years of age. Sports Illustrated heard about it, shortstop, second baseman for the Yankees retiring. They sent a photographer over, he took a picture, and we were going to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Excuse me, Sport Magazine. No, it was Sports Illustrated, it was. Still got that picture, but what happened? Ralph Hout moved up to general manager. They signed Bobby Mercer, and they wanted one of us to play one more year and break him in. I wanted to retire. Tony said he would do it, but one week later he got called in reserves and he had to go out. And Ralph called and asked if I would to spend one more year with the Yankees. I did. It worked out very good for me as well. Well, it worked because you came home and you led your family and you led your family well. You've got a great legacy. And as a result, you know, I know of uh, one of your boys, Ron, he's a pastor in our state and is here with us today at Impact. Your grand boy, Ronnie, is making, making us look good. He's the one to help <laughs> get that video together and works with our staff. Um, so you did well. I have another son that planted two churches in North Muskegon, Michigan. Wow. And he has been a pastor there for a number of years, and now he's at a Christian camp retiring at 65. So, And then I have two grandsons that are pastors. One of them, and well, Ronnie was one of them. He's been in Mississippi for the last four years. Now he's on board here. And then the other one is in Warrington, Virginia. He's a Liberty grad, Liberty Seminary, and went on to be a pastor. Oh, that's great. Well, I had the honor to come over and, and hang out with you there in Sumter, and I noticed all of these letters on the table, <laughs> and, uh, and, and you, you, you shared with me what the letters were. I'd love for you to share with them uh, what well, that is. Well, it's hard to believe that I'm 88 years old and that I've been retired all these years from 29 to 88, and yet I still an average about uh, 10 letters a day. There was one day during COVID that I received 23 and they all say kind of the same thing. They said, I grew up and my grandfather was a Yankee fan, my father was a Yankee fan, and on the internet I've been looking at your playing and I know all your stats and would you sign these? And basically most of the letters centered around these were Yankee fans. And I just, um, I answer all my mail, no charge involved in it or anything, just uh, they, they all send postage for you to send it back. They know the ones that'll sign and send it back and don't ever always do it the next day. I kind of wait till I have maybe 25 or 30 and then I'll do them and then send them that way. But it works out good and it's an amazing response. And the good part is that Mickey Mantle's wife put together a track written by Ed Cheek. And it's just a wonderful track where the gospel is presented in clarity. And I put one of these, each one of my things that I returned to the young boy. These letters come from all over the United States. The Yankees move from the Bronx to different places and they come from all over. And it's amazing the response I get. Mickey's rookie card sold not too many months ago for $12.6 million. That card is on the back of the track and you've got some right there. And I have 10,000 that I'm sending out. And the wow. Lord has blessed me with the good responses from folks. Some come to know the Lord when they read that track. Some give it to a friend that needs to know the Lord, and I feel like it's a good ministry for somebody as old as I am. And they make it easy because they send the letter with the envelope with the postage on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, they send it to try to get uh, your autograph, and then you deflect that, and you deflect it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, and I, and I love the notes you put in there that, you know, appreciate you reaching out, but here's the real reason uh, for my life. That's just really neat. Well, the Lord is blessed. He really has. And uh, I can just be thankful that um, baseball just opened unbelievable doors for me. I was privileged to be and give my testimony on five different occasions, Madison Square Garden, the Astrodome, Hawaii, twice in Japan with Billy Graham. And... Uh, the Lord just used, used uh, that. Ed Young was my chaplain when I was coaching University of South Carolina. He led several of my boys to Christ, and they became pastors. The Lord just gave me wonderful opportunities over a long period of time. Fantastic. 
Well, um, it, it's, it's great to have you with us. And he said, we, we got a bunch of preachers coming, don't we? He said, so get me some of those tracks out of the car. And, uh, <laughs> and so we've got some of these that will be available for you. We'll put them on the, to- the tables out there at registration. And, uh, and then he also said, grab one of those books, and, uh, and I want to sign it. And he's going to sign it, and we're going to give it away uh, whenever you come back in here. Don't be late uh, for the 225 session. So you'll be here, and you'll be a, have a chance to get his book. And um, we'd love to be able to, 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 to bless you as well. So we got, we got some youngsters in the room out here, I can see. So it would be an honor for you to pray uh, over these uh, young pastors and planters and leaders. And some of these seasons, guys, too, might need a little bit of prayer <laughs> along the way. So we would appreciate that. We all need prayer. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that some years ago when I was just 8, 9, 10 years old, that there were two dear men that they gave their time to teach a Sunday school class. And in that class, God's word was opened in such a way that I knew I was a sinner that needed a savior. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I knew that in my life, I had displeased God in many ways. And he pointed out the penalty involved, the wages of sin is death. But then he shared the good news that Christ died for my sins. He was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures challenge our hearts, Father, that we might live for you, that we'll not only be have you as our Savior, but you be Lord of our life. Challenge all the young people that are here today, that they might delight themselves in the Lord, find the joy in you at all times, never forget your nearness, tell you in detail our problems, our anxieties, and your promises, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds as we rest in Christ Jesus. This we ask in Jesus' name.